Hey guys, Francis here. In this video, we are going to talk about the capillary electrophoresis experiment in CM3292, particularly the capillary electrophoresis of inorganic anions. Before going into capillary electrophoresis, let's take a look at what is electrophoresis, which most of us may be more familiar with, especially if you are a fan of CSI. Electrophoresis is widely used in DNA fingerprinting and DNA profiling. DNA samples like blood, hair, or skin can be collected from a crime scene. Forensic scientists can use DNA fingerprinting to identify a suspect simply by looking at the unique patterns in their DNA. So how does DNA profiling work? First, we can extract DNA from the cells. Then we can use the polymerase chain reactions to produce multiple copies of specific DNA fragments using primers. The primers can be labeled with fluorescence tag, which makes it easier for us to identify specific DNA fragments afterwards. If you are interested in how PCR works, please check out the link below. So once we have multiplied the DNA fragments with PCR, we can subject them to electrophoresis, where the fragments get separated according to their size. By definition, electrophoresis is a separation method based on the differential rate of migration of charged species in an applied DC electric field. This simply means that the negatively charged DNA fragments will move through the medium at different speeds when we apply an electric field. This diagram here shows a typical setup of a gel electrophoresis. First, we can introduce the DNA fragments into the sample wells, and then we can apply a voltage across the gel. The negatively charged DNA fragments will be attracted towards the positively charged end node. The smaller DNA fragments can move through the gel faster, while the larger DNA fragments travel slower. The final step will be the visualization, where we can use laser to excite the fluorescence tag. The results can be visualized as a series of colored peaks highlighting the different length of each DNA fragment. We can then compare the results with the DNA patterns from possible suspect. In this case, the DNA patterns from the crime scene matches quite well with the DNA patterns of suspect 2. Therefore, we can confirm that suspect 2 was present at the crime scene. This modern DNA profiling method that we have shown here is a very powerful tool in forensic science. Because a tiny amount of DNA sample left behind the crime scene is sufficient to identify the suspect. The DNA profiling would not be possible without the use of electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is an advanced separation method that makes many difficult analytical separation possible. From the separation of inorganic anions to the separation of DNA and RNA with unparalleled resolution. For example, to sequence DNA or RNA, we need to distinguish between long chains that may differ only by a single nucleotide or base. Only electrophoresis has sufficient resolving power to handle this problem. In this experiment, we will be learning about capillary electrophoresis, which is an even more powerful tool as compared to the conventional gel electrophoresis. Electrophoresis was first developed by the Swedish chemist Arne Tisilius in the 1930s for the studies of serum protein. He was later awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1948 for this work. Modern capillary electrophoresis was pretty new. It was developed by Jorgensen and Lucas in 1980s. Compared to the conventional slab gel electrophoresis, capillary electrophoresis is much faster with a higher separation resolution and it only requires an exceptionally small amount of sample. To give you some perspective, in HPLC, 
The amount of sample used is typically a few microliter, but in capillary electrophoresis, we only need 0.1 to 10 nanoliters of sample. That's about 1,000 times lesser sample as compared to HPLC. Fast forwarding to now, CE is widely used in biotechnology, pharmaceutical sciences, and forensic science. Therefore, if you plan to work in this industry in the future, this experiment will give you some ideas about how CE works. On the left hand side, we have a typical chromatogram obtained from HPLC. And on the right hand side, we have an example of an electrophorogram obtained from CE. Now, pause this video for one minute. Take a pen and a piece of paper. Try writing down the differences you observe between these two experimental results. Which analytical method is better in this case? First of all, we will notice that the peaks in CE are sharper as compared to those observed in HPLC. So what does it mean? The peak width is related to the number of theoretical plates, which tell us about how good the separation method is. The narrower the peak width is, the greater the number of theoretical plates, and the better the separation method is. Secondly, if we take a closer look at the retention time in HBLC, it took about 6 minutes to completely separate these three analytes. On the other hand, in CE, it only took about 2.5 minutes to completely separate the three analytes in this case. In other words, CE is more efficient as compared to HPLC. In this experiment, we will be using capillary electrophoresis to perform both quantitative and qualitative analysis for the separation of inorganic anions in the mixture. In the first part of this experiment, we will try to determine the concentration of chloride of an unknown sample using external calibration method, which I believe most of us are familiar with since CM1191. In the second part of the experiment, we will try to identify different inorganic anions present in the solution using sequential spiking method. So, what is sequential spiking? Let's say if our sample contains three different anions, fluoride, chloride, and bromide. How do we find out which peak is due to which specific anion? To determine the order of anion detection, we can add a small amount of one of the three anions into the solution and perform a second C measurement. For example, if we add a small amount of fluoride into the solution, the second C run will give us a greater peak area for fluoride as compared to the previous C measurement. Then we will know this peak is actually due to fluoride. And we can repeat this process with additional chloride. And then bromide. Until all anions have been identified. So now that we have some idea about the background and context of the C experiment. In the next video, we are going to take a closer look at what capillary electrophoresis is. Have a good day and see you guys in the next video. Bye!